Hi, Sam. Hi, Bo. Thank you so much for joining the Chem Talk podcast today. My name is Roxanne. I'm a second year at Trinity College Dublin, and I'm studying human health and disease. And today I get to interview two of our co-founders for Chem Talk who have recently come out with some exciting projects. So Sam and Bo, could you briefly introduce yourself and where you're at in your careers? Cool. Thank you for having us. So I'm Sam. I'm one of the co-founders. I'm currently an incoming graduate student at Yale University. I'm Bo. Uh, I'm also one of the co-founders. Um, I graduated University College, University of California, Irvine, uh, with a chemical engineering degree this year. Um, and now I'm doing some more classes and some side projects. Great. Thank you so much. And how did you find each other to start ChemTalk? Um, so, well, me and Scott and Lawton, uh, who are, those are the two other co-hosts. Uh, I went to school with Lawton um, and, and Scott and Lawton are neighbors. So I found ChemTalk through Lawton. Um, and I believe we found Sam because we were actively looking for, I mean, I think we were looking for writers and also just people who could like design stuff pretty well. Um, I don't entirely remember precisely how, how we did it, but we came across <laughs> Sam and then we were like, oh, this person is great. So yeah, so I, we just like, yeah. It also helps that we're all from Southern California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all okay. pretty close to each other, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And uh, how long have, how long ago did you start it? December of 2020. Okay. Yes. I think. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And since then, you've come out with a lot of cool stuff. So recently we've seen the periodic table uh, was released. When did you start working on that? That's been around a two month endeavor so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And why did you decide to make that one of the, the front projects for the organization? Well, ChemTalk is aiming to be the world's number one chemistry education super portal by students for students of all ages and backgrounds. A periodic, period, oh, excuse me, wow. A periodic table is super essential to the chemistry experience that of course we had to have it. What is especially cool about our table is that the links embedded throughout explain what's electronegativity or what's density are the articles that our own ChemTalk team members have wrote. So we think it's really special how this table can cohesively bring together all of our team's efforts. And we're only adding more features from here. So there's a lot of room for growth. Yeah, so when it comes to cohesiveness and organization, you briefly mentioned that, can you talk a little bit more about how it's organized uh, to make it the most accessible it can be? Right, I think this table stands out in the sense that it's both approachable and non-intimidating. I think a lot of, I think generally chemistry can come off that way. So we wanted to make sure that our design could be both a straightforward, quick experience if you're specifically looking for something, and also an immersive in-depth experience if you just want to click around. Bo could show you through demo right now. Yeah, yeah. true. And, and also to touch on organization, we just have it organized in like a bunch of different layouts, um, which I'll show in the demo that I'm going to do right now, Great. perhaps. Yes, you got it. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can find my, sh my screen. Can you see, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and let, me, sorry, let me get rid of this crap. Okay, so first of all, um, we have it arranged, actually, I'll just, I'll just make it bigger. We have it arranged so that um, you can uh, hover over different elements. And then in this main display, this is the one that everyone will land on if they come to this page. Um, you can hover over the elements and it'll show basically information up here. You can click on them um, and it'll select them, whatever. Uh, and it also arranges them in a bunch of different groups. So we have all of the like different, I mean, groupings of the different elements, as you can see up here, if you hover over these, they will be highlighted out so they stand out a little bit more. Um, and then also for some articles, you may see that there are these like learn more buttons here. Um, and so these are only on, I, I mean, they're on most of them, but there are a few that don't have them like Argon, for example, because there just doesn't, we just don't have an article about that yet. But if you click on the link, it'll take you to our page on that element. So here's the one for oxygen, for example, um, which has all the information. Uh, and stuff like that. And it has like fun facts, you know. Um, <clears throat> and then for, for each of these tabs, we have um, 
we have uh, more like different displays of, how, of, of information. So for example, in the properties tab, we have like atomic weight, density, melting point, boiling point, and phase. Um, and so each of these, uh, the gradient ones are, the color is corresponding to how intense the, the value is. So for example, for atomic weight, obviously hydrogen is the lightest and uh, looks like osmium is the heaviest, or sorry, that's not osmium, <laughs> organicin is the heaviest. And so you can also tell that because hydrogen is the lightest here and then organicin is the darkest. And so from, from this, you could, you know, it indicates that as you go down the atomic weight increases, which makes sense. Um, and then, so that's the same for all of these, like, you know, density, boiling point, melting point. Carbon is the highest melting point, fun fact. Um, and then we have this STP phase, which shows the phase at, you know, room temperature, essentially. Um, actually at, yeah, like room temperature, um, which I, I guess, thinking about it now, it's not STP, but it's fine. Okay. And then for electron configuration, we have- we'll um, to later. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to go back and change that immediately after this. After this. Um, <laughs> We have electron configuration. So this is broken down into the, you know, which which uh, shell has the unfilled orbital. Mm -hmm. So these are all uh, ones that have their outermost electron in the S, S shell. And then, you know, we have, yeah, I mean, I, I think personally that the key, the legends here are pretty like indicative of what is displayed. Mm -hmm. um, magnetism, you know, it, again, it's just these groupings. Um, oxidation states, this one's a little bit more, uh, not intuitive, but I actually, I think it's still pretty intuitive, but basically the most, the more amount of positive, um, more amounts of positive oxidation states there are, the redder it becomes, and then the same is true for blue with more negative. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have, you know, like polyatomic ions. So it'll show up, you know, down here. And, and all of these, all of these um, values also show up in these, in the square here. So for example, in chemical groups, um, it shows the atomic weight, whereas in, atomic radius, it shows the radius. Um, and then we have like the discovery date. And so essentially we just have a bunch of information. So if you look at any of these articles, um, it's a bunch of different information and we just compiled it, compiled it into one table that makes it easy yeah. to, to view. I think that is, yeah, I'm gonna stop maybe. Great, thank you. That looks really, really nice. And between the two of you, who kind of did what to set that table up? Well, Bo did all of the coding for it, and I did the UI UX. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. And um, are there any activities you can think of maybe in a classroom or for students at home who are learning <coughs> ways they could utilize the table as, as a study tool? Yeah. For students, you can use this to check your electron configurations, or you can use it to look up the the density of a certain element. Mm -hmm. And honestly, even if you just want to learn, you can see how these to see how these elements function in our daily lives. That's a, a point that may be missed in some high school classes or college classes. And it's really important to know that everywhere in our life, we can see these elements. Yeah. And it's really nice how it's linked to articles. So you can kind mm -hmm. of have some continuity there with whatever you're looking at or studying on that particular day. Right. Also, it's just a good visual aid, I think, yeah. because I know, I know that personally for me, if I had to learn chemistry through no diagrams or mm -hmm. colors, it'd be over. I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even having arrows showing the directions of general periodic trends or like chemical group blocks, mm -hmm. that's really, really helpful in learning about an unfamiliar topic. That's what I was going to say as well. I love that you have the arrows on there for periodic trends. That's always what mm -hmm. I used to draw into my periodic tables. Yeah. <laughs> I still would, but it's nice to, to have something to compare it to and make sure that it's correct and visually. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, and what are you, the two of you looking forward to creating in the future? Are you going to be continue, continuing working on the periodic table or what, what are some of the things that you our brainstorming? Well, some projects we have considered could maybe be an interactive guide to the 20 essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. That's something on the horizon, maybe no promises. Um, besides mm -hmm. UI UX design on my end, I think some sort of career navigation resource would be a great thing to have on our website. Mm 
yeah. we already have podcasts the ones that you do <laughs> that are great and articles that highlight the depth and diversity of chemistry careers mm -hmm. but it could be nice to have more compiled guides on available internships or programs for quick for k-12 and college students yeah and when it comes to that demographic what is the most important thing that you think that you provide through chem talk to that audience i think the most important thing we provide is that our website is made largely by students mm -hmm. like the, our team members are high school students, college students, and only some graduate students. It's really something that we're students trying to understand the student perspective, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't like, we're not inaccessible in a way where we're going to use like really high form language or try to, or we have so many years of experience that we just can't connect to you. Right. Yeah. Like we've literally been through that. We know what worked best for us and hopefully it can work best for someone else too yeah That's I think as of as of now I think we've had 52 undergraduate and high school students um and then I think seven graduate students and postdocs mm -hmm. I if my count is right but yeah we're very student driven yeah that's what makes us special yes I agree with you and um, if there are students who are looking at the website and maybe have questions or comments uh, where would you direct them? So we actually have a form on the website. Um, I don't remember exactly where it is because uh, I don't ever fill it out. Right. But um, there is a form I mean, that yes, you, you can do. find. Well, we'll see. Uh, sometimes, yeah, of course. Um, there's also, uh, I mean, we have a, a variety of social media. So we have like a Reddit. We have... Twitter, I think we have Instagram, we have Facebook, all of those uh, forums are like highly active and we have people that like actively respond to those. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, uh, you can find you can find our emails as well on the website <laughs> uh, if you want to directly contact us, I guess. Okay, so if someone has a question, would you recommend that they go through the social media channels? I think so. I think, um, I think right now, probably the best way is like DMing us on Instagram or like commenting or like maybe DMing us on Reddit. I'm not sure who who's in charge of the Reddit account, but I know that Instagram for sure is active still or is, is like active. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we have a group of people that can answer questions or relay them to someone who can. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. And this is still like a really new initiative, this table. So we're, of course, very receptive to any feedback anyone could have. It's only been two months. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's great. And is there anything else that you would like to add about the table, about the organization, anything that you want our audience to know? <laughs> mm. I don't think I have anything. I mean, I just want to make it clear that we are the the table as it is right now is not the finalized version we are for sure still thinking of like ways to make it better um i i mean i can think of things that can either be improved or that we could add on to make it better um okay and i, I guess our aim is just truly to make like the best resources for like mm -hmm. students learning chemistry so mm -hmm. you know i i'm personally not going to stop um not to imply that anyone else would stop but i'm not going to stop until we have like the best you know, tools, the best resources um, mm -hmm. that exist, I guess, essentially. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to things that you want to add to the periodic table, could you maybe give us a few examples about? Oh, what... perhaps. Um, <laughs> so the, I think the one thing that we've gotten actually a pretty significant amount of feedback on is that um, a lot of the colors are very saturated. And this is really good for people viewing on like their phones or on their like personal computers. But um, we have noticed that sometimes in classrooms, like some old, older projectors will kind of like dim the colors and make it a little bit harder to like distinguish between them. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now we're working on a, I guess like a dark mode, night mode type situation where you can toggle between having the normal like standard color layout and a, I guess more night friendly um, layout like that. And, and to touch on the point of colors, I'm also actively working to ensure that like um, different, uh, 
I'm trying to make sure that it's like most accessible to everyone. So I have mm -hmm. actively worked on like um, colorblind modes uh, to make sure that all the colors stand out, um, things like that. Like, yeah. That's great. Sam, did you have anything to add to that? Or do you think Boga? He, he covered it. <laughs> he did. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, great. Then in that case, thank you both so much for giving us the periodic table tour. And if anyone was listening to this on Spotify, you can head over to YouTube to see the video demo. And then I think that's all we have for today, unless the two of you have any last thoughts. Oh yeah. Check out the periodic table at chemistrytalk.org forward slash interactive periodic table separated by dashes. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. We look forward to hearing from you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you both. All right. Thank thanks so for much. having us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.